Netflix, where your fearless co-hosts Isaac and Larry force each other to watch the worst pieces of shit on Netflix. We will go over every bad edit, all the broken dialogue, all the wooden acting, and laugh along the way, because this is the Bowels of Netflix! Alright, welcome to the Bells of Netflix. I'm Isaac, and with me as always is my fearless co-host, Larry. How are you doing this week, Larry? So I've been watching a lot of TV, because it's what I do, because well, it's still in pandemic. I still don't have much going on. I'm kind of in, in flux, waiting for uh, to move and my life to change. But uh, So I'm watching a lot of stuff, and one of the things I've been watching is Supermarket Sweep, which uh, I don't know how... F- are you familiar with Supermarket Sweep, Isaac? Not at all. You're d- Not at all? No. See, you've never heard of it. I live under a rock. Wow, okay. I didn't know that. Because we, we, we talked about this for like a second before the podcast started. But if you, you've got to watch this show. It's from the 90s, which right there. I mean, it's from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But the big, the best part of it was during the 90s. It was hosted by David Ruprecht. And it's a show where people go and um, they like it do a really, really lame trivia and like stupid fucking game show games. And then they, uh, they, they like for winning time to run in a big sweep where they literally run around the supermarket as fast as they can and try and fill their carts with the most expensive items and bring it back and win. <laughs> and it is a fucking gem. It is an absolute huh. gem of television and always had been. But uh, the host is like this really kind of dorky but very relatable and cool dude named David Ruprecht. And one of his lines is always uh, like when they're going to do the big sweep but they run around with the carts and everything. It's always like our shoppers are going to run wild through our aisles and I absolutely want to use that as a pickup line like before I go to engage in coitus with uh, <laughs> <laughs> with a lovely woman at some point I want to say hey baby you want to, can I run wild through your eyes <laughs> I am a sad lonely man and I do nothing but wallow in that just make sure she's into anal before you pluralize aisle because that's what it implies uh, yeah okay I suppose that's fair I didn't really give it that. I didn't give it any thought as to what the actual breakdown of that would imply. More just I wanted to say it because I was like, I need one pickup line. No, it's, it's definitely butt stuff. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, lean in over the first drink and be like, uh, what's the anal thing? What's the situation back there, back door? Come on. And somehow you are married. <laughs> <laughs> what's the access hatch like? What's the access hatch like? <laughs> oh, good God. Yikes. I mean, I don't know what to follow that up with. I, I just wanted to make a funny joke open. about that. Uh... Follow it up with open. <laughs> just do the things. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we are the Bowels of Netflix. Two friends hate each other, watch terrible movies. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter. Bowels of Netflix at gmail.com is our email address. We would love to hear from you. Uh, and we might read your email on the air. I don't think we got anything this week, though, but that's all right. Yep. Our listeners are too exhausted after getting their backdoor hatches rammed. By Twilight for weeks and weeks and yeah, weeks. Yeah, so much Twilight. We're finally moving on. No, not quite. Well, <laughs> yeah, but, like, no more Twilight movies. That's right. There's no more Twilight movies to watch until she writes more and they get made into movies. But, you know, oh, that's God, many years even. away, one would hope. Don't even. I mean, she is writing more. That's that's yeah. From Edwards, is she going to do every book from Ed's perspective? I don't know. We'll have to ask Doctor. I just hope she gets hit by a bus. I kind of also. I don't want her to die, but I do want her to stop writing. Okay, her fingers get run over by a bus, so she can't type, and her larynx gets run over by a bus, (laughs) so she can't do speech to text. (laughs) That seems a little brutal. She can get ALS. That seems a little brutal. I'm not going (laughs) to wish ALS on someone. You fucking monster. (laughs) I just hope I, she finds. I hope she finds like a love of uh, like cake decoration. Twelve year old boys. No, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I hope she finds a love of cake decoration and is like that's oh, all, okay. that's all I'm about now because I don't watch baking shows. Like I like cooking shows. I have no interest in baking shows. I don't like baking. That's so specific. Yeah, I I don't. I just don't like baking. You know, what? it's too. Uh, dusty. Do you like confections? I mean, I, I like eating the stuff well enough. I'm not really a big cake guy, but I do love cooking. You're a muffin though, man. So. I am a muffin We've man. We've established that. I, I am a muffin man. But uh, I shouldn't have brought up muffins. 
No. No, it, it was... I want a muffin, like, once every six months. And, like, when we talked about it, we were coming up on, like, my six-month muffin binge. <laughs> you have it marked on the calendar? No, it just, like, I <laughs> my body craves it, and after a while, it's just going to be sated on muffins for a while. Kind of like how anacondas can, like, eat a big Owen Wilson-sized meal and then sleep it off for a month. Fair enough. All right, good Wow, God. what so... is this show? <laughs> Jeez, I am covering crazy. the very recent 2021 movie, He's All That. Yep. I did not misspeak. It's He's All That instead of She's All That. It's a basically a remake with jazzed up modern time stuff starring this one was TikToker. Point, this one was pointed out Addison to me Ray. by my best friend, uh, who you also know very well, Isaac, who he said, you should absolutely make Isaac watch this. He'll hate it. Oh, uh, did you? Uh, did they know the TikToker? No. OK. Just so Addison like Ray yeah. is it, the star of this movie and she is. I think the second most followed TikToker, something like a hundred million followers, like ridiculous. Um, and yeah, she basically does goofy dances. Um, and she's also twenty and sexy, so there's that. Is she actually twenty? Um, uh, yeah, maybe twenty one now. Uh, she's twenty. Well, she's twenty one. Okay. She's twenty one in like two weeks. Okay. And she was on Jimmy Fallon and did the TikTok dances, and when all the the old people were like, "Oh, it's TikTok," I don't understand. Oh, yeah, so so is like she dance? This I genuinely I've never heard her name before in my life. Well, obviously, besides us talking about it. So is she sort of the one who brought uh, TikTok into the public eye? Is that the? Uh, yeah, definitely part of it. Uh, there's a few because I don't know. I, I'm on TikTok, but I kind of I mean I, I watch my Jiggly Girls as I like to call them, because uh, the feed knows I'm a heterosexual male, and it feeds me jiggly girls. Um, but <laughs> I'm usually more interested in <laughs> other things on TikTok. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I don't follow Addison Ray. Uh, there's a few other famous people. Charlie DeMeo, I think. I don't know. But. I, I, don't, I don't have TikTok. And not for any reason. Just like, I don't... I know I'll waste a bunch of time on it, and I waste a bunch of time on a bunch of shit that's already pointless. So it's just like, yeah, I, I'm already doing this heroin. I don't need to also do angel dust. It's that sort of thing. Like I don't. It's See, just I just know what it's going to lead to, and it's just me wasting more time. And I don't. Need yeah, it. no, it's bad. And my the uh, the there's so many people who toe the line of. Because TikTok doesn't allow pornography, right. and there's so many people who toe the line of, how much boob can I show? Well, yeah, I mean, that's right. Yeah. I think and that I, used to be the case on YouTube videos. as well, but, you know, that they, 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 they crack down a lot harder because they run the world. So disappointing. I want, let's, free the nip! Yeah I, th yeah, I think it's a little silly at this point. Okay. Anyway, so he's all that. I, I never saw the original She's All That, but I've seen, you know, teen romantic comedies, that kind of thing, so... I feel like I'm by the time we're done genre. with this podcast, we're going to have reviewed them all. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Because we're uh, kind of addicted was... to giving them to each other. <laughs> budget was listed as $20 million. Uh, I believe it's a Netflix Jesus. original, so uh, there's not a theater release or a worldwide gross or anything like that. It also, like, just not... came out, right? Like, a month ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah, very recently. Mm -hmm. I think they filmed it in 2021, so, Jesus. like, earlier in this year. Jesus. Um, so 91 minutes long, IMDb is 4.3, Rotten Tomatoes Critic is 30%, which I was even surprised at that, uh, and Rotten Tomato Audience is 23%. So generally pretty low on yeah. all those scores, because we're usually a little little higher than all that, but... Yeah, can't wait to see what you give it. Yeah, I... I... <sighs> Man, I, God, uh, I'm a you, bad, bad person. You really, you truly are. You truly are. You, you shame me. You disgust me. <laughs> so a lazy pop ballad plays over the camera panning around the most over-the-top, traditionally girly type room. Just fluffy pink pillows and, like, framed, pithy, like, live, laugh, love shit signs on the wall. And everything's <laughs> ultra pink. And ultra fluffy and ultra girly. We waste no time, however, getting some product placement as the camera lingers over a MacBook Air. All the power you need, none of the weight you don't. Starting at nine ninety nine at your local <laughs> Apple store. God damn it! <laughs> the thirty seconds into the fucking movie. Okay, sometimes when I'm like in the elevator at work, uh, and, and it's the long elevator ride because they're you know even though we're a multi billion dollar company, the elevators were made in nineteen seventy six and haven't been serviced since then. So yeah, the elevator Oompa ride Oompa's up, like pulling rope to up get it up. Right. floors is usually very long and sometimes in there when i'm alone i'll just do my i'll for some reason i don't know why i started doing this i started doing like fake ad reads of like if we were doing the podcast and they're usually terrible 
It's like this podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, it's brought to you by Spare, Squarespace. Make your own fucking website, dickhead. Because I'm a bad person. <laughs> but I realize I don't know why I'm doing ad reads when you're gonna clearly do all of them because you've been angling for it for a year now. <laughs> you're gonna fucking Cook, be an Apple uh, spokesperson by the end of this goddamn show. There is so much product placement in this fucking movie. <laughs> I, I, I'm like I, immune to unless it's like a a really glaringly obvious like. If if Bruce Willis in oh I don't know uh, Die Hard if in the new Die Hard movie if he would like smack his head off the side of a Pepsi truck I would notice it but like <laughs> otherwise like I'm not even gonna look at his phone I'm just gonna be like oh that's a phone I, I these things I'm just immune to it that's so weird because yeah. uh, 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 there's tons of Apple product placement like just everyone has a an iPhone 12 Pro. The fucking three camera lineup, and it's just... I, I just think I uh, just... Maybe I just don't know about phones. <laughs> I just don't... Yeah, look, I don't know. Especially There's... iPhones, because I've never... I don't own any Apple products except my beat-to-hell Nano <laughs> uh, Gen 1, but like... There's also I, glaringly yeah. smart food popcorn on the counter at one point. Which, <laughs> now, see, that uh... kind of thing I might catch. I'm never going to catch the model of a phone or a lot. I just... It's a phone. I don't know. They're all the same. Well, especially the laptops. It's just the silver with the prominent Apple logo. Right. Like, anyway. But, yeah, so tons of it in this fucking movie. Right. I'm not going to mention it again because it's too much. <laughs> uh, we keep panning around the room. We see multiple ring lights and various vlogging equipment. So, obviously, she's kind of portraying a real-life version of herself. So, Addison Ray, TikTok extraordinaire, wakes up to her alarm and instantly starts streaming on Great Value TikTok. Although they eventually call it TikTok at some point. So, I don't know if that and how that works. This sounds just like the other, what was the other influence movie that I did? The, the foreign one. Uh, airplane Mode. Oh, Same right, thing. right. She wakes up and starts TikToking immediately. No, yeah, I'm, and... I'm wrong. I'm wrong. She wakes up and does her makeup and then yep. gets no, back no, no, in no, this bed. this does that too. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's yep. how it works. I guess that's how it works. Yeah, because you can't actually wake up and look not perfect. I'm, you know, I'm fascinated about what's going to come next. Like what, you know, I don't mean like in the next 10 minutes or the next six months. I mean like in the next, what's going to be the next big thing for influencers? Or is it just this forever? It can't be just this forever. Everybody evolves. Uh. I feel like nuclear holocaust is going to happen before we get too far into the influencer stage. I don't think so. I just we'll don't see. think so. <clears throat> um, we see her face center screen while comments scroll by ridiculously fast on the left side of the screen oh, and my... random emojis float by on the right side of the screen. God, all influencer movies are the same. Stop making them. I know. <laughs> Stop it's making so... them. It's... it's. Meh. Thankfully, we don't get a lot of that continuously it's okay. kind of in the beginning where it's just set up to establish she's an influencer right and then that kind of trails off so i'll give it not credit mm -hmm. but they could have done a lot worse with it right. so addison goes downstairs and greets her exhausted mother who just got home from a 12-hour shift as a nurse and they have some mother-daughter banter banter jokes about being a nurse and the meth addict who came into the ER and the toddler who had a thing shoved up his nose. And it's, it's all right. And, Addison and opens. she is not playing herself in this, right? I'm sorry. No, yeah, she's got a different name. Okay. Uh, pa pageant? She's playing a less rich, less famous version of herself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I think her name is actually Pageant, which is awful. Which pageant? Is, yeah. yeah. I, like I beauty think... pageant. Oh, pageant. Yeah. I don't like the I don't like Paget. I do like Paget. There's an actress named Paget Brewster who's very good and very funny, oh, which okay. kind of and it's kind of an awesome Paget Brewster is a fucking cool ass name. Yes. Pageant is not a cool name. No. So I <laughs> decided to stick with Addison. <laughs> well, yeah, she, that's fair. She opens a uh, a check from the mail for $3,000 from her vlogging fame, uh, and we get a conversation. She learns that she played the plumber, plumber bill last week, and her mom's like, oh, why did you pay that? You shouldn't. And she's like, oh, I make so much money because I'm famous, and da 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 da, -da. <clears throat> Makes sense. Uh, Addison gets in a fancy convertible driven by her two rich friends. Um and because like so yeah she lives with her mom who's a nurse so they're not super rich this is all set in la okay uh, and they live in just kind of like your standard like working class apartment building but when she goes to meet her friends she like runs around to make it look like she lives in a fancy apartment that's like nearby her right. so she's pretending she's rich it's just all the same yeah all teen movies are the same yeah they they really are <laughs> it just it just it like it crushes my soul it's not even like i don't even get mad some i just get dis i'm disappointed it just try something new or don't remake the same god and this even i guess this is a remake for the this is uh, yeah but uh, i don't know 
teenagers like chicken nuggets and french fries and Isaac, masturbating. Like, I they're very simple people. I like those things, but I'm more evolved than that. I just, it's so easy. It's like not, I don't care. I'm not going to get into a giant rant about teen movies for the umpteenth time. Because <laughs> I'm sure we're going to watch a thousand more before we're dead, so screw oh, it. Oh, God. Save it. I'm scared about what you're giving me next, Jesus. <laughs> you, <laughs> you should be. <laughs> you fuck it. It's, it, I, I, man, I wish I had seen this uh, the week prior so that I could have given you this instead, because it is the perfect follow-up to Twilight. <laughs> oh, no. I don't, I don't want to hear that. <clears throat> So, um, apparently they're on their way to the video shoot of some douchebag musician who's in their grade who's just blowing up online with his viral music, whatever. And he's also Addison Rae's boyfriend. In real which life? Is... Or in the movie? No. Okay. In the movie. Okay. Okay, I shouldn't say Addison Rae. I should no, just no, say no, no, that's, that's totally fine. I just wanted to double check because I don't know anything about this person. So, that's fine. There's definitely people from TikTok that, mm-hmm. like, I'm sure she brought over because it was like, oh, yeah, let's cast my TikTok buddies. Yeah, it's TikTok. TikTok the anyway. movie. Oh god, I want to hang myself. <laughs> I, that I'm dizzy. <laughs> oh my god. Uh then we cut to um the douchebag's viral music video being played on the phone of a teenage girl riding in a beat ass pickup truck with her angsty, vaguely punk older brother. He calls douchebags music crap and they argue back and forth a little bit and he's wearing like a Stooges t shirt and like yeah, he's just Yeah, oh, everything everything's crap now, man. Like real art is just like whoa. So is he hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at her? Does uh, he want no scrubs? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I thought of that joke when you started this, and I've really not been listening while I tried to phrase that. So, yeah, he, he's, the, he's the cranky, angsty guy who's obviously going to fall in love with Addison Rae. Oh, so me, but without the falling in love part. Also gorgeous. He oh, is that would get not me unbelievably at all, but... <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no offense, my dear. No, 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 but you're not wrong. Am... Hey, I'll be the first but to he's... tell you I'm not gorgeous. Played by Tanner Buchanan, uh, who's, You think I don't he's know. gorgeous? I know Tanner, who that is, because yeah. he's, he's oh, in, um, he's one of the stars of Cobra Kai. Honestly, he's the worst character in Cobra Kai, in my opinion. Oh. Well, one. Yeah, no, I think he is the worst character, Come just all around. I don't like him much. And not, really? I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, his acting doesn't blow me away, and the character, I'm not interested in, and it, just everything about it. His storylines suck. He, he just sucks. But yeah, he's Rob. For those of you who seen, may have seen Cobra Kai, he's Robbie in Cobra Kai. Yeah, no, I don't find him very attractive, but I mean, also, I don't know, I don't find, I'm attracted to very specific things. Very specific he, I, things. I I'm very attracted to this man in this movie. He is oh man. He kinda has shitty hair in Cobra Kai, which I think and I kinda think in this movie too, if I'm not mistaken. He's got like cause he, he's perpetually wearing like a t shirt, flannel, like skinny jeans and a beanie. He, and he's got he, long hair sticking out of his beanie. He has a very boy bandy look. Yeah, with a very square yes. jaw. But yes. I don't I don't know, that doesn't do it for me. When it comes to when it comes to guys, that's not my thing. Sorry. He's I, I thought he was quite good in this. Like not amazing, but I, mean, I was surprised. I've, I've only seen him in one. I don't hate him. I've only seen him in one thing, and it it doesn't help that I don't like his character or storyline too. So that mm. certainly influences my thoughts about him there. But I don't really have anything to say about his acting. I don't like it, but again, I've seen him in one thing. I can't really judge it. He. I mean, this is kind of a dumb. Uh, um, what's the word? Um, Movie. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's, like, I can't think of the word. Premise? Character? Yeah, arc? character. Uh, uh, traditional, overdone, overused c- kind Stereotype? of character. Stereotype. There we go. I'm, t- it's early. It's not even early. I'm just, I just Continuity. Continuity. Um, but yeah, it's a ster- very stereotypical character, mm-hmm. but he plays it perfectly okay. and actually has charisma. So All right, sure. Yeah, I'm We'll get into that it. a little bit later. Um... So, and then at school, we see the punky dude and his outcast female friend hanging out talking. They seem close, but not like they're dating. Turns out, friend is a lesbian, and she ends up hooking up with one of the rich girls later, which I don't think I talk about, but that's it's just kind of cool. There's sure. sort of just casually lesbian, and it's not a big deal. It's just like, yeah. oh, totally normalized. That's really cool to see as we go on in media. And like yep. I said, I've been watching a lot of things, and a lot of the... I, I think I just finished... I just finished two shows I've been watching, and I'm, like, in the midst of a third, and they all have very prominent, like, lesbian or non-traditional relation... I don't even want to use that word. Just just relationships all over the spectrum, and it's been refreshing. And a lot of times, it's, like, just not even a thing. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's who cares? It's not a plot point. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Gen Z, you suck a lot of balls, mm-hmm. but I'm glad you suck a lot of balls, because all balls should be sucked. I think every I think every generation is getting a little bit better than the generation prior. In certain respects. Yeah. Well. I mean, also Addison Ray is famous for jiggling about. Yeah, but I mean, do we hate that because we're just grumpy old men at th- in, at age 30? And what are you, like 32? 40. I don't You're know. You're not whatever. 40. I'm not keeping You're track. You're not pushing 40. <laughs> God damn it. But I mean, I mean, that's, I don't know, whatever. That's, who cares? I think I, it's, I, the, I, I think I, it's the, the, the solemn duty of the older generations to scoff about the generations below them. But I don't know. I mean. I also approve of the jiggling. You cannot, yeah, a jiggling. I got it, man. There's it's, porn. Yeah. Just watch porn. Yeah, but sometimes I like to watch jiggling and not, like, get all hard and have to, you know, <laughs> pull it out and shove it in the couch. It's like to appreciate a jiggle without, you know, Stop doing the whole sex thing. calling your dog the couch. <laughs> anyway, this is pointless. I gotta stop doing this. Oh, my wife and I do have a running joke about me sexually abusing the dog. It's terrible. Hey, ju- it is just horrible to be in your house. Yep. We call it daddy doggy time. <laughs> oh, God. That's great. That's just great. Just oh, Jesus. Vintage Isaac. Uh, so, uh, Punky Dude has an old analog camera and likes to take artsy-fartsy pictures, i.e. a picture in a trash can that contains a full unpeeled orange next to a discarded math textbook, which he claims says volumes about the student body at the school. It sounds like that's supposed to be a joke, so I'll let it pass. Kind of, because, like, he's like, oh, it speaks so much to what the, the wasteful students at this ultra L.A. class were like, and then his friend just, like, looks at him and is like, does it? Does it really? It's just trash. Shut up. So they kind of they kind of call out his pretentious douchebaggery. Good, good. That's good. Uh, Addison and her friends arrive on set of Douchebag's music video. Um, she's made him a very fancy dish of croquembouche with almond flour because he's gluten free. What the fuck did you just call me? <laughs> croquembouche or croquembouche is a French dessert consisting of chew p- pastry puffs piled into a cone and bound with threads of caramel. In Italy and France, it is often served at weddings and baptisms and first communions. Huh. I know. I never heard of it before. <laughs> it's in this movie for one reason and one reason only, which we're going to get to very quickly. Is it because it rhymes with the word douche? Yep. No. Oh, who could have guessed? Isaac, <laughs> Isaac, who could have guessed that? <laughs> Who could have fucking guessed it? <laughs> Addison has one of her friends grab her phone and start live streaming outside of Douchebag's trailer because she's going to go in and surprise him with the croquembouche. Uh, she walks in with the croquembouche and finds Douchebag shirtless rolling around in bed with a bikini-clad bimbo. Addison freaks out and starts throwing pieces of the croquembouche at them. She yells, you don't deserve me. You don't deserve my croquembouche, you croquem douche. That sure is clever. Ha ha mm-hmm. ha. It rhymes. Yeah, sure did. Yep. It sure Mm -hmm. did, Isaac. It did. Addison ends up with her face soaked in tears and snot, her makeup all messy, and only for her friend to reveal that she's still been live streaming the whole time. So now Addison is humiliated from the viral video. She gets a call from uh, her makeup sponsor who basically fires her because she's gone viral for all the wrong reasons. Isaac, the beginning of this movie is, like, one beat away from being exactly <laughs> the same as Airplane. Like, yep. to the, to the, exactly the same. That so far, they're <laughs> almost the same movie. There's only, there's only so many stories you can tell about influencers. Uh, well, you know what? Yes. Actually, you are correct. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> her new nickname is Bubble Girl, uh, named after the large snot bubble she had coming out of her nose. At school, she and her popular friends decide the way for her to get back on top and get her sponsorship back is to take a loser guy from the school and make him over to be prom king, and she'll be prom queen, because her whole thing is making people over, and, like, the douchebag musician, she made him over at first years ago, and he was a loser, and she made him popular and sexy, so that's her thing. So, now they start scanning the school for losers, and they go through several losers, Uh, There's one, like, Hispanic drug-dealing kid, which is a little... Okay. Um, There's also a fat Asian kid who apparently just sold an app to a science company and is going to be launch cars into space rich. Uh, Like Elon Musk. Addison winks at him, and he gets distracted, and his entire arm gets lit on fire by a Bunsen burner. The girls giggle and flee while someone else uses a fire extinguisher on him. Cool. That's funny. (laughs) That's funny. Finally, they settle on angsty punky kid. 
Addison invites Punky Kid to take photos for the car wash fundraiser this weekend. He asks what the fundraiser is for, cancer research, homelessness. Addison says it's for prom. He laughs and says that's sad and walks away. Uh, Punky Kid's little sister ends up talking to Addison. And, okay, she's... I said she was a teenager earlier. She's a sophomore, so she's... Uh, I don't know, I guess 15 is sophomore age. Um, so she's older than I thought at first. But she gives uh, Addison some intel on her brother. Uh, Addison finds out he likes horses and volunteers at the local horse farm every morning before school, because that's what people in Los Angeles do. Yeah, sure. Um, so she shows up in the morning, offering to help him with his work in exchange for a riding lesson. She's dressed in, like, super fancy riding coat and riding pants and boots and everything. And he's just wearing his, like, typical flannel and all that. She ends up shoveling horse shit, and, you know, there's just banter back and forth about gross shoveling horse shit. And he's, oh, you never shoveled shit before? Just for my cat's litter box. What do the horses eat? Oh, well, Freddy over here likes uh, uh, Chipotle, and uh, this one likes sushi. And she's like, oh, you're lying. Oh, giggle, giggle. I want to make a blood pact with you. I'm going to get a knife out of my drawer right here. Oh God, I don't my like hand these. And make a blood pack. Let's never do another influencer <laughs> movie again because we've done two that are prominently influencer based. Like, pr- like that is the draw. And so far, how far into the recording are we here? Let me take a look. Uh, thirty we're minutes. Almost thirty minutes in, and so far, it is the exact same movie as Airplane Mode. Like the exact same thing. <laughs> let's just we gotta stop this is horrible this is a mistake there's only the I one don't story blood, apparently blood packs well why not <laughs> no, you don't <laughs> yes it's nurses who come and assist me <laughs> because i'm very old i'm pushing 40 shut up <laughs> oh god um so they yeah they banter back and forth. Um, they're from different worlds, but they kind of end up with some flirtatious bonding. She ends up falling off a horse into a pile of horse shit, uh, and he rolls on the floor laughing at her. Uh, she laughs too and throws a handful of horse shit at him. Uh, so the romance has begun. Great, great. Uh, the next day at school, Addison invites him to a karaoke party. Punky Kid initially refuses, but then his uh, female friend accepts the invitation on both of their behalf. The party is a super posh L.A. beachside mansion type party. Uh, Punky Kid and his friends st- stick out like a sore thumb because everyone is shortless and gorgeous and diving in the pool and all that stuff. They grab some free pizza and make fun of the popular kids, and Addison comes over to greet them. Uh, Addison's rich friends are very badly singing karaoke, and they're all kind of making fun of them. Uh, they wrap up, and then it's Addison's turn next. She goes up and starts singing Teenage Dream and is killing it. Um, what is and then does dream? I feel like I should... the Katy Perry song. No, I don't know. Skin that. tight jeans. Yep. Never mind. Now I do. That okay. line did it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, and then this is an excuse for her to do 30 seconds of Addison Ray dances on stage. So, right. Yeah. Sure. TikTok. Um, but then douchey ex boyfriend shows up with his new squeeze, who is the bimbo from the trailer. Addison notices them and starts to flounder on stage. Punky Kid heroically jumps on stage and starts singing with her, and she gains her confidence back, and they kill the last half of the song, going viral on TikTok in the process. You're so exhausted. I'm just, I, I just, I don't need to pay attention anymore <laughs> because <it's, laughs> I've seen this. I know what happens. <laughs> This ah, these influencer things are so I really do like I don't find influencer culture even remotely interesting. Like outside no. of this show and outside of me being just myself and an angry dumbass. I just it like it bores me. It's just boring. Like it, anyone who's famous just for being famous or like something really I don't want to say lazy because I'm lazy, but like lame. I just I have no interest in it. My brain shuts off. Yeah, and uh, speaking of famous for being famous, one of the Kardashians is in this movie in a cameo. Uh, speak of the, that is the always my first example whenever I think of that phrase. Yeah, it's it's definitely a lesser Kardashian. <laughs> I forget who it is. I don't she know, plays there's, the. It's a fucking million the, um, of those things. <laughs> uh, the the um the like sponsorship contact of okay. Addison who like calls her up and is like, Oh honey, you've gone viral for all the worst reasons. We're dropping you from our sponsorship program. And she pops in for three seconds now and then like, right. Oh, I saw your, your, vi- your video went viral. Maybe we can start talking again soon. Just keep going in the right direction, honey. Does she speak with that ridiculous list? No, but <laughs> I like to, I don't know. No, 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 I'm... that's fine. I'm just curious. I didn't, you know, <laughs> I'm just curious if that was a, uh... 
choice or not. That's how I insult the yeah. famous people. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. Give them speech impediments. I'm not. I don't know that I'm as fine with that, but you know, hey, whatever. Man. <laughs> it's a Kardashian. Oh god. <clears throat> Uh, Punky Kid and his friend offer Addison a ride home. She surreptitiously leaves her wallet in his truck by accident so she can show up at his house the next day. Classic movie. She asks for another horse riding lesson, and he obliges. They flirt some more on horseback. Punky Kid's acting is actually not too shabby. I give it a solid 6 out of 10. He's engaging, charismatic, believable. It doesn't seem like he's playing a role, mm. which is all of what Twilight seemed, is that everyone was just playing the role they were supposed to play. Oh, he yeah, nobody looked like, natural. In he seems like a person. He, mm -hmm. he seems like the person he's supposed to be playing. Mm. It doesn't seem fake or put on. Okay. So... Fair. Not amazing, like you know, six out of ten isn't great, but no, that's still, like still an for th for this movie, yeah, it's surprisingly good. Okay, uh, fair enough. And I definitely got the vibe he was channeling Heath Ledger misanthropy from Ten Things I Hate About You, which is the absolute best high school teen rom com. Never. Seen if you've it. never seen it, you should. No, Isaac. You know what though? I think th doing this show has killed my desire to ever see a rom com again. So yeah, it's it's actually good, and it's Heath Ledger. And he's just a dream in all kinds he's of ways. He's pretty good. It, it, it's really hard to get a bad performance out of him. No, and he, he makes that movie for sure. Everyone else is good in it too. But yeah, he just mops the floor with that, <laughs> with his performance. Um, so, but yeah, he's definitely, this kid is, uh, what, Tanner Buchanan. He's, he's yeah. channeling that a little bit. Not as good. You know, Heath Ledger is an 8 out of 10 in that movie. Right. Um but still, uh, impressive. And Addison Rae is surprisingly not as bad as I thought she would be. Mm -hmm. Maybe only a 3 out of 10, but honestly leaps and bounds better than I would have guessed for her being famous for TikTok dancing. Like, right. It's not, it's, she's not good. She pulls me out of the movie sometimes, because mm -hmm. she's not an actor, really. But, I don't know, she has moments that are okay, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I was very pleasantly surprised that she wasn't atrocious well, that's interesting i mean I, Not yeah, good. I, I don't know anything about her. i've never seen her work i don't i couldn't pick her out of a lineup so. yeah I, I believe this is her very first acting role ever because she just got famous like within the last 18 months mm -hmm. like she was literally a nobody mm -hmm. at the start of covid and then started jiggling and got famous well yeah we know if anybody's out there jiggling we know isaac will know about him yeah well yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're hard uh, and their chemistry as a couple actually kind of works. I mean, it's dumb high school rom-com, but it, it it works. Sure. It's better, much better than, uh, what was the one I watched after Airplane Mode? The fucking surfer thing down in Australia? Oh, uh, Riptide. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, the romance in that was uh, unbelievable and stupid. I remember and, you going on about that for a while, yeah. Uh, yeah, that just absolutely didn't work at all, and this just does. Mm. Not... Again, not great, but passable, which is way more than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So we, we've, like, we've done, I'm not going to go into a full thing, but, like, for a teen rom-com movie, mm -hmm. this is good. That's not saying much. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that, it's really, like, <laughs> yeah, it can be technically good and still suck. <laughs> yes. It, it it does what it needs to do to be a teen rom-com, mm -hmm. and it does it well, but it's still a bad movie. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna get a we're gonna get a lot of that uh, next week as well. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, they're they're riding horses and whatever, flirting, flirting, chemistry. They go to an old train station where he takes photos and they share coffee. There's funny stuff where he's like, "Oh, do you ask permission to take photos?" And he's like, "Oh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't." You kind of you kind of learn when it's okay to snap a picture. Then he takes a picture of an old Asian man with a cane who gets really pissed off and starts chasing him, Hilarious. and they run away. He's like, "Oh, and sometimes you have to know when it's time to run." I hate it. I hate it. Uh, I hate it. They sip coffee and talk about their families and bond. Uh, they both uh, like have divorced parents or dead parents or whatever. Bullshit, bullshit. Um, Addison invites him to a 1920s Gatsby-themed birthday party for her friend. The right. theme is drop it like it's F. Scott. Uh, <laughs> if I wasn't wrapped in wires, I would have gotten up and left. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, my little rat is saying hello. Hello. Okay, sorry. Hello, I'm distracted. Ratty. Hello, He is... Oh, look at your pen. Oh, do you have a tumor? You have a tumor now, don't you? Oh. oh. He's, he is two, point, two and a half years old, so he's, like, oh, past his life expectancy. That's... In, in human years, that is 104. 
Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I'm. It's not too sad if he, you know, tumors out and dies next week. But anyway, okay. Jesus Christ, rat well, tumor. Well, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I guess. That's a bummer. <laughs> Jesus. When when we when we had we lived together, we had uh, uh, rats, and I don't know why, but every every time we would talk to them about them or forever, as if we were talking about them, they were always very ridiculously English, like nonsense American, over the top, pretending to be English. English. Right. Hello. Yeah. Just Hello, Governor. It, you got treats for me? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much the the voice we had for the rats. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I don't remember. It just why. works. Yeah, it works. It does. It seems like a rat voice. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Like um, <laughs> so yeah, drop it like it's F Scott. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, I'd forgotten. Why did you bring it back up? <laughs> they um they go out of their way to pretend that they're educated. Um, cause they, like, at the party, they make comments about the characters and some of the lesser known characters, mm -hmm. uh, that I don't even remember. Like, there's Daisy and whatever, Nick is the main guy? I Nick is the main guy, yeah, book. Daisy is the main female lead. But there's, of. like, some of the people dress up as, like, whatever the secondary female is that I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember her name. I do, yeah. I, I fucking love Great Gatsby. It's a phenomenal story. Uh, oh yeah, the, definitely. The DiCaprio movie. I mean, Leo's fine, but and he's fine, which says a lot. I mean, he's he, he's yeah. a master class actor, and in that movie, he's fine. But it's yeah. Baz Luhrmann movie, and he's kind of a one trick pony. Like Moulin Rouge was great and all, but after that, it's like okay, you're just kind of doing the same thing. Moulin again. Rouge was great. <sighs> Moulin Rouge is not great. Not great. It was an interesting spectacle. A spectacle. I'll take spectacle. I'll accept that <laughs> answer. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god. <clears throat> so but yeah, but they and they mention a couple photographers, Ansel Adams and some other photographer that I don't even know cuz mm. I'm a pleb. Mm. But so, yeah. Whoever wrote this like, you know, went on Wikipedia and was like, I'm going to pretend I'm smart. Addison and Punky Kid and his friend and his sister go on a shopping montage for their 1920s themed clothes. Then we get a whole makeover scene where Addison cuts Punky Kid's long hair and trims his facial hair and nose hair and I don't know whatever a makeover is. He exfoliates his pores, Gross. bleaches his asshole, I, yep, I don't know. Definitely. Um and he goes from scruffy grungy hot to clean cut hot. And honestly, both are working for me. I kind of want this fine specimen of man flesh to dick me down into oblivion. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's available. Thankfully, he is 22, so no worries there. Yeah, I checked. I checked. I also checked. Yep. I checked your work. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's important for our... Tanner, if you're listening and you want a fucking old fat man in the ass... <laughs> <laughs> And you don't mind that he has hemorrhoid problems. Uh, let me know. Jesus Christ, this is horrible. Horrible. Oh, God. Horrible. Uh, so, at party, uh, Punky Kid is getting tons of attention from the ladies, because uh, he's super hot now. He goes around snapping pictures. One of Addison's friends almost reveals that they have some kind of bet to see if Addison can glow up the loser Punky Kid into Prom King. So, obviously, <sighs> that's, that's the Christ. dramatic fulcrum of the movie. So, mm -hmm. a little predictable there. Douchebag musician is at the party. He complains to his dude friends that his new squeeze has dumped him over text. He gets super emotional, and then when he realizes they're not filming him, he berates them, yelling, What do I always say? Always be filming! And they pull out their phones, and he does another take of his emotional, I just got broken up, yeah. influencer. Yep. Yay. Yep. Yep. Later on in the party, douchebag catches Addison at the top of the stairs and tries to apologize and say they should get back together. Um, if they both end up being prom king and prom queen, their followers would go bananas. She tells him to fuck off and slaps the drink out of his hand. He complains that that was the last of the watermelon flavor and all that's left is mango, and mango is a shit flavor, which was oddly specific enough that I chuckled at that. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's a better joke than anything else you've said so far. <laughs> then Punky Kid's little sister, who is who is a sophomore, not 12, uh, she shows up, and she's a huge fan of Douchebag's music. He puts his arm around her and suggests they go get a drink together. So I wonder where this is going. Punky Kid and Addison take some pics in the photo booth, and they almost share a kiss before the big birthday cake thing ceremony starts and they have to leave and go do that i feel like i'm suffering more than you here you are that is yeah this is this is horrible i gotta fucking you're too immune to teen movies yeah 
Yeah. Mm. And it's not... Well, okay, maybe it is because everyone's also attractive and super young. Yeah, clearly, Isaac. Clearly well, that has <sighs> something to do with it. Tanner, call Considering me. you haven't stopped mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, ne- next week's movie is in a similar vein, kind of, sort of, but I think it's going to be, I-, I think I know you well enough to know that it's going to aggravate you in one specific way, so, but this is, I- I'm looking at your face, and then I'm looking at my face, and I'm realizing <laughs> that I'm in far more pain than you are here. <laughs> Clearly. Definitely. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Um, so during the, like, birthday cake lighting candle ceremony punky kid sister comes running out sobbing with the douchebag music uh, musician behind her as was very predictable he got all handsy with her on a billiards table punky kid and douchebag square off for a fight and there there's they've had a history cuz the douchebag is we've seen clips of him like um like slamming uh punky kid into a locker and mm. throwing him into a trash can and just standard bullying stuff right right so they have a history together they square off for a fight uh, douchebag rips off his shirt, and Punky Kid is like, "Why? Did, why? Why are you shirtless? Why?" Yeah, why? Yeah. Uh-huh. I get um, it. And this is actually really weird because I saw this fight clip on TikTok like a week ago, like before I had seen this movie and before I knew it was from this. Okay, it is just like a clip from a movie. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, just interesting, mm-hmm. but. So, and yeah, it's not established at all, because, like, he's, uh, Punky Kids is super into photography, uh, is super into horses, and apparently he's an MMA master. Of course. Uh, but they just never brought that up. Well, yeah, before, he learned so. all that in, uh, in Cobra Kai. Same character. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. His name's not Robbie, is it? Uh, I don't remember. No, it's not. Of course not. No, it's, it's <laughs> because Cobra Kai's not finished. Um... But yeah, it's just like he puts his hands behind his back and just dodges punches by bobbing and weaving and like fucking um what's the Mr. Magoo John Cena flip that he does? <laughs> Mr. Magoo John Cena flip. Can you be a little more specific? His maybe? move, his finishing move. John Cena? Yeah. The attitude adjustment. Okay, yeah, he basically does that. Okay. Okay. Mr. I, I Magoo? don't know. What is what does Mr. Magoo have anything to do with John? Do you know who Mr. Magoo is? He's the bumbling old man. Yes. Which John Cena now is also. No, not at all. He is in like the greatest shape of his life. Have you seen He's him? He's also lately? like ninety. He is not ninety. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he's like forty five. He's not a young man. No. Yeah, no, yeah, you're correct. He's not a young man, but so what does that have to do? Have you seen the man with his shirt off lately? <laughs> it's my question to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you could have chosen anything, and literally anything. Also, <laughs> Mr. Magoo is not, I don't think of his age. I think of his uh, bumblingness. <laughs> it's just such a confusing question. What is the Mr. Magoo John Cena thing? What am I supposed to take out of that? <laughs> you fucking <That's> a- dunce. <laughs> Yeah, an attitude adjustment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the attitude adjustments. Um, okay. Uh, douchebag onto the ground. Great move. Um. <clears throat> oh God, where are we at here? Okay. Uh, douchebag ends up throwing Punky Kid's analog camera into the pool, which we learned was a gift from his dead mother when him and Addison were of course. bantering. Of course. Right. Of course so he's was. naturally he jumps right. in the pool after the camera. The and fucking Chekhov's gun. As soon as he said this is the thing that I care about, it had to be just. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Jesus. Um. So he storms off all upset. Uh, Late in the night, Addison's one friend, the birthday girl, finds douchebag passed out on the couch after everyone has left, and she fucks him. Okay. At school on Monday, Is Punky Kid... Is that something kid... we're supposed to care about, or just the thing that happens? Uh, it kind no, of is relevant. I'll just wait, I'll just wait. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, on Monday, Punky Kid is a popular hero after his fight went viral on TikTok. He's also been nominated for Prom King. We find out that... The birthday girl friend of Addison is now running against Addison for prom queen. Addison susses out, and she's she like shows up like hanging off the shoulder of a uh, douchebag musician. Right, and it's weird for Addison because even though she left him after he cheated on her, like one of your best friends is suddenly with him two weeks later. That's just weird. Sure. Uh, and Addison susses out that her friend has been planning all of this for a while, and that's why she kept streaming. The video while in the trailer instead of stopping in order to humiliate oh, Addison. So secret villain. Yep, secret villain. Got it. She wants to be prom queen and get all the subscribers and all that, whatever. Yeah, because that's how it works, sure. It probably is how it works. What do I know? Yeah, no, seriously. I don't fucking know. 
Punky Kid decides to show Addison his dark room and photographs. Oh, and that was a whole thing where, like, he's always taking photographs, but he never shows them to anyone. And Addison's like, hey, come on, can you show me a photograph? Uh, uh, come on, uh, let me into your world. I hate it. Uh, I'm gonna I drag it. my slug trail across your pictures. Eh? Ew, <laughs> so unattractive. <laughs> oh God, um, you ruin. You find a way to ruin everything. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's what my wife always says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. At all. <laughs> um. So they bond and flirt, bond and flirt, end up kissing on the floor. Uh, so they've, they've finally um, committed uh, original sin. Yep. Uh, Addison's <laughs> about to confess the whole makeover original prom sin. king thing. But then Punky Kid says how much he trusts her. And she's like, oh, God, you trust me? Uh, I'm bad. And she oh. gets up and flees in a panic. And I'm sure the movie's going to end and he's never going to find out. And they're just going to be happy. Yep, yep, yep exactly. Definitely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're so upset eight movies <laughs> punky kid uh goes to his younger sister for advice uh she asks if he and addison hooked up and he says no but they did kiss but then things got awkward sister says eh, that's okay first kisses can be awkward first time having sex can be even weirder and then their grandma pipes up from like she's sitting at the on the easy chair watching Golden Girls or whatever, and she just pipes up and says, "So was the last time, because you never know when it's gonna be the last time." <laughs> Which is like <laughs> Jesus pretty, Christ, Grandma. That's pretty great. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> that reminded me of um, and there, there's a couple other gags that like kind of come out of left field, but of the the Christmas movie I did, mm. the Cinderella, whatever, fucking. I, I genuinely the Christmas Prince. Oh no, I genuinely don't remember. No, it's, it's the one Christmas where it's like, story? hold my balls. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, I don't it, remember which one it was, but I do. I remember that bit. Yeah. yeah. Just like these kind of out of left field jokes that are like, oh, holy shit, you actually did that? Yeah, <laughs> that this works movie? for me. That works for me. <clears throat> so Sis tells Punky Kid he needs to... Okay, so immediately after that, where you're like, oh, this movie, you know, okay, all right, you did that. Fine, I'll, I'm on board. Let's see what you got next. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, Sis tells Punky Kid he needs to prom pose. <laughs> Again, I, I am in a, such an awkward position to get up and leave, and the dog is, like, sprawled behind the chair, so I can't roll backwards. So I'm basically a prisoner. I, this, I am this, I am recording in protest. Active yeah. protest. You're you're a terrorist at, um, not Abu Dhabi. What's the prison? Guantanamo Bay. Yep. Yep. And you're being tortured because this is you hate America. Pretty, honestly, yeah. <laughs> honestly, yeah. So he ends up showing up at the car wash with a big print of the photo he took of Addison with the word prom question mark written on it and a bouquet of roses. Little sis is filming, of course. I, I also have to remember that the, I, I, I this is a remake. So I and I know that uh, She's All That has a lot of cliches in it of like teen romance cliches. Have you ever seen Not Another Teen Movie? Which is like a... No. It is like... It's like this scary movie, sort of, of teen movies, in a sense right. of, like, it takes all the cliches and wraps them together. And a lot of that comes from this movie, I know. The the, the original. So, I'm being harsh because I hate the genre, but I think, in fairness, a lot of this is remake, really. I'm guessing. A lot of yeah, this. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Because I think, I think this, he, uh, She's All That, I think, was one of, like, the landmark teen romance movies. Definitely, yeah. So, and- I, I have to be... I'm, I, it, it, I'm only really remembering that now. I suppose it would be a little fair. It says it's a remake. They get something of a pass in that sense, but it's still dumb. Yeah, I guess. I, it's I still would've... stupid as hell. I would have appreciated if they were a little more tongue in cheek with some stuff. Yeah, that would have elevated this movie quite a lot. Well, it's clearly not for us. Um, Except you, mm-hmm. you're a big TikToker, so I guess it is for you, kind of. Yeah, the jiggling girls. Um, <laughs> so uh, Addison is ecstatic and is like, "Oh God, of course I want to go to prom with you!" Bounce, bounce, bounce. Uh, but of course, backstabby friend shows up and reveals the whole bet makeover thing, and that Addison had to find the biggest loser and turn them into prom king. So bounce, bounce, the movie, bounce. which so far has had just a couple light cursing moments. Uh, mm-hmm. I forget exactly what the curse words are, but it's like TV 14. So they get one F-bomb, and they use it here. So Cameron shouts, so I was a fucking bet. And it's a perfect example of how hard vulgarity can actually hit when it's used sparingly. Right. Because, like, like you, it, I don't know, it just comes out really emphatically, and you're yeah. like, oh, shit, he's wounded. Right. Unlike so. this show, where I can't fucking stop cursing my goddamn fucking balls off my dickhole face. <laughs> <laughs> Something I really need to stop doing. It's an inheritance from my father. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, at prom, we see 
the principal is played by Matthew Lillard. Do you remember who he is? Oh, uh, yeah, I know that name. I can't put a face to it. Hang on. He's, He's... Shaggy. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He's the new Shaggy. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, and new being like 2003, but yeah, I know he. He does the voice. Of, he's like he has taken over the voice of Shaggy because the oh, guy really? who did the Shaggy voice died uh, that, uh, ten years ago or whatever. Wait, I know that guy's name too. If I think about it, uh, I know. I I don't remember fuck. either. But he's he was like, yeah. I can't think of it. But I didn't. I didn't. George know that. Clinton. <laughs> no, it's not George Clinton. <laughs> But we might remember Matthew Lillard as a scrappy side character in Summer Catch, the 2001 baseball rom-com starring Freddie Prince Jr., okay. who also starred in She's All That, upon oh, which this hey, movie is based. Look at that. So, there we go. Ugh, <sighs> six degrees of bullshit. And now Matthew Lillard is playing an out-of-touch 50-year-old principal, and goddamn, I'm old. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I feel my age more and more every day. Yeah, really he terrible. looks old as fuck in this, too. Oh, he's he, I don't know, he's all right. He's he has two minutes of screen time, but yeah. Uh, there is a huge dance off at the prom during which I noticed at least two or three TikTok dancers that I've just seen um, on TikTok in passing right. uh, of middling fame who were you know cast in the dance off because I guess they're in circles with Addison Ray. Sure, get him exposed. <clears throat> <why not? clears throat> douchebag wins prom king, the douchebag musician, uh, and Addison wins prom queen. Um, during her prom queen speech, do they give speeches? No. Okay. Because you were prom king. Yes. Yes. No speech. Did someone glow you up? No. Okay. You were just all that. You were already all that. No, I was a fat loser. My name was first on the list, and I was just nice to most. I'm nice to most people, <laughs> and I'm funny. <laughs> and my so name was the literal top of the list. There was nobody <laughs> above. There was no. I didn't go to school with any Adams or anything. B E <laughs> was the first name on the list. Uh, during her prom queen speech, she shows a PowerPoint presentation nope. of photo highlights from her social media account. But I then she would starts. Walk out. <laughs> then she starts showing candid, messy shots uh, of her, like without makeup, just getting out of bed in the morning, and the bubble sh- snot picture from the video. And she promises that she's going to be more authentic, which is exactly what prom queens do. Okay, sure. Uh, she exits stage right and goes outside where Punky Kid rides up to her on a fucking horse. Again, and they kiss, I'm a prisoner. And they slow dance to a modern remix of Kiss Me, that song from the 90s. Kiss me. Yep. <laughs> beneath milky twilight. My, the first youtube video that i remember watching mm-hmm. like 2005 like right when youtube came out mm-hmm. was just two random indian dudes lip syncing kiss me <laughs> and like playing in a playground <laughs> and it was the most <laughs> odd random thing in the world and i still i want to go find that i, I still watch still that up. now yeah <laughs> it's it was great <laughs> so everyone's happy and the movie's over great yeah Oh, oh wait! I did. I I didn't even process what you just said. Oh, that's it. The movie's over. Okay. Yep. There, there's the because uh, there's there's a lot of shit I skipped over. But Punky Kid was he, he's like I don't want to go to college. I just want to travel the world and take pictures. So and then Addison Wanted is like, die. oh, I'm gonna I'm still gonna do social media, but I want to be more authentic. So like the the resolution shot of the movie is them like on horseback in Portugal or something, and she's taking a video, and it's like, oh, I'm. Tra- Traveling with my squeeze, and I want all of you to be the best versions of yourself. Yeah, cut to Addison Ray not doing any of those things in real life. Right, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just jiggling and fucking rolling around on a pile of money. Yeah. Eating I mean, I don't want to, I don't even know who it is. I don't want to disparage her for real, but I mean, I'm guessing that's not the, her, her TikTok is not being authentic because I don't think those people have followed. Probably not. I mean, I don't think she does a whole lot of like commentary. It's pretty much just her dancing. And jiggling. Okay, I guess that's a thing people care about. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I like it. I don't follow her. I've seen her jiggle. She mm-hmm. jiggles nicely. I can't with you. Man. <laughs> I can't with you. You gotta stop this. I, You're well, becoming I'm just a trying, villain. I'm, I'm being honest. I'm not gonna put her in a van and like force her to jiggle for me only. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> but if she's jiggling out in public, I will applaud All the right. jiggles. All right, that's fair. Yes, that's fair. you go, girl. Jiggle hey. your way to fame. You go, girl. Jiggle your way to fame. <laughs> that's that's the title of my self help book. <laughs> <laughs> they were gonna say that's the title of my autobiography. <laughs> I do a lot of jiggling, but it's not the kind of jiggling society approves of. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's true. I know that. Thing. So, yeah, it just it ends as predictably as it started, huh? Yep. Yeah, yep. I, I, I guess it is a remake, so, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get something new and exciting. Yeah, I, so... You didn't hate this enough, though. I can tell you, I, I haven't heard no, your, no. your wrap-up, and I haven't heard your rating, but I can tell you right now, you did not hate this enough for my <laughs> happiness. It, it really is saved by... The the writing's not as bad as it could have been, and the performances are substantially better than they could have been. Okay. Not again, not great. So like on grading it on a scale of teen rom coms, it's probably like a seven or an eight. Uh in terms of real movies, it's a two. It's not good, but there's enough and fucking Tanner Buchanan, again, call me if you want a fucking old dirty asshole. Um but he is gorgeous and uh, <laughs> does well in this. Does really very well. And Addison Rae is not as terrible. And generally, the acting's not awful. Mm. So, and uh, again, comparing it to Riptide, uh, pretty much all of the acting in that was gag me with a spoon. Mm-hmm. This is just you know like drinking room temperature milk. Okay. Where yeah, it's like, I get what you mean. You can you can stomach it. Yeah. Not what you want. It's but not awful. It. Yeah. It's not it's not sour milk, but right. it's not, you know, it's not a good cold glass of chocolate milk. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, that I mean it it didn't sound uh no, it sounded. It's it's hard to judge. I, be, I bet I it, bet it, you would like it more than you liked airplane mode. Probably. Yeah. It's hard to judge like just based on the tropes, because at that point, a lot of it does come down to the perform for me. Like, I can mm-hmm. put up with more if the performance is good, but yeah, it, just hearing it, it sounds an easy one or a zero for me. Like, no question, just based on the usual nonsense, but... Oh, Lord. You don't hate these things enough. No, I'm I'm definitely more forgiving than you are. Yeah. I don't have as much hate in my heart. We gotta cure you of that. <laughs> I need to make you more like me. I need to get you in a van. You need to mail me hot dogs. You and Robert Fitz. <laughs> Jesus. Get you in a van together and correct both of you. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, that's pretty much... There's not much to say. It's, you know... Yeah, it sounds pretty cut and dry. Just usual yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, what... Uh, next week, you're covering Congo, which is apparently the best movie ever. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, uh, next week is Congo. But Now, th- this your next movie, very similar vein, in a way... And I really wish that this had come this week instead, uh, because it's it's I, I, it's not Twilight, it's not even Supernatural, but it still feels like one step removed from Twilight, and and that would have been great to sort of trail off a little more. You're gonna be watching a movie called Midnight Sun, which sounds like Midnight it's a Twilight Sun. movie, but it's not. <laughs> Is it on Netflix? Yeah, Midnight Sun. Midnight oh, there, Sun. Oh, my Netflix got weird. Yeah, I already don't right. like the thumbnail. Oh, she's got that stupid disease. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. If I know you, you are going to be upset at how uh, misrepresented this disease is because a lot of people are. <laughs> oh, born with a fatal sensitivity to sunlight, which is a real thing. I forget the name of the condition. It's very rare and very crippling and an interesting disease. Mm. But anyway. Born with a fatal sensitivity to sunlight, a sheltered teen girl falls for her neighbor, but hides her condition from him as their romance blossoms. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Bella Thorne is in this? Who's that? Someone somewhat famous. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. She's she's one of the new jiggly females. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, there's like a whole genre of like, this isn't what it's called and this isn't entirely correct. I'm going to call it sick girl movies. <laughs> oh god no i mean i'm serious i'm not i i that's not the best term to use for it but it's the first thing that comes to mind because there's like a whole but like girls with a disease who yeah, fall uh, in love yeah of like it's that's... it's teen romance movies with like oh i'm also dying um what was the <sighs> one? me before you i saw it in theaters with my nice girlfriends and it was so predictable and lame and i remember i remember like Within the first 10 minutes of the movie, I leaned over and told my girlfriend at the time the twist. And by the end of it, she was so angry that I had gotten it <laughs> spot on. And I'm like, it could not have been any more obvious what was going to happen. You have a preternatural ability to sense twists. Yes, maybe. But in that case, it's the most obvious thing on planet Earth. If you've never <laughs> seen me before you, uh, first of all, save yourself the trouble. Second of all, it's got the most obvious fucking twist. 
of all time. I'm just going to spoil it because fuck it. It's so if you don't want to be spoiled on like 2000, probably 13 fucking shitty teen romance sick girl movie. Uh, it starts off with her talking about how sick she is and how she's like going to die. Not any day, but like soon. And then she meets a boy who has the same disease, but it's in remission. And I leaned over to her and said, oh, well, he's definitely going to die. Spoiler! Guess who was right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god! So there's like a whole genre. And apparently, because because I I was kind of briefly looking at the Rotten Tomatoes release for these. Apparently, that's a whole genre, and there's other movies like this. That's so weird. Of like, yeah, I'm just gonna call them sick girl movies, where it's like the lead female lead is sick, and uh, there's uh, what, there's one. Uh, you know what? I think it actually stars um, not Kristen Stewart. Who's the one? The <laughs> The girl from The Hunger Games. What's the actress's name? George Clinton. George Clinton, yep. There's starring Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. There's one that she's in, too, where it's a very sick boy, where she falls in love with a boy who's uh, in a wheelchair. Uh, similar premise. I forget what that one's called, though. I also saw that in theaters. That's so... Uh, is yeah. it, like, just a way to, you know, plow without commitment? No, it's just to make them dramatic with it and tragic without really having to write it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I guess and I mean that's people with real have real life circumstances of course you know that that's I don't want to take away from any of that but it's as far as writing goes it's a very easy way of like oh well we got a clock on this bad boy so we don't have to make any artificial stakes they are already there baby I'm just imagining like my tinder profile and like I'm only interested in terminal cancer patients because I'm scared of commitment <laughs> I I've seen some like I want to smash a bit but back like... in the day, but you know, when I was God. on Tinder actively, yeah, I've seen some weird sh- that Jesus. would not shock me that much. Oh, good golly! Well, midnight sun, uh, midnight sun. I um, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> you see what I mean though about it being like one step removed from Twilight because it's like. <laughs> yeah, did, can't be out in the sunlight or she's gonna fucking sparkle. Yeah, it's it would have been too perfect. That's such a shame. God damn. But, it. Oh well. But next uh, week, oh Rob Riggle's in this. Uh, oh, I bet I he plays that, the dad. I know that he was on um the Daily Show. He was a correspondent for a uh, while, yes. and he's done a bunch yes. of other stuff. That's right. I actually saw him live at UCB in New York. Oh, cool. That's right. Yeah, he's good. He's so yeah. Um, curious what he's like in this. Probably not great. Sure, he's not a big fo- He's not a sick girl or a lover, so he's probably not the focus. Oh God! Hope he- hopefully, he's a creepy uncle in a van mm, with so Robert Vince and me tied up in it, <laughs> chained to either side, playing footsie. That'd be a big twist. It was like, oh, I'm in this movie. <laughs> remember that but i don't yeah, remember no. much of 2017 yeah. yeah i guess that explains it all right well yeah, yeah. we're thanks next for listening week, we love you next week is congo and it is so it is such a nice feeling that i think i don't want to say for the first time but kind of for the first time isaac has truly fucked up. he is truly and completely <laughs> fucked up because Congo might be the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> You're a sick man. I, I remember wa- watching it as a kid and seeing reviews of it, like as a as a young adult, and thinking like, God, that movie was terrible. Watching it again, it is the best movie ever made. <laughs> it's a terrible movie, but I truly loved it. With I, I, I had a great time. I am so excited. We really should have flipped oh because God. you would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> we should have flipped movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you would not have been we, happy with this. We went backwards. So I, I I told you before we started recording. I am looking forward to writing my review of Congo. I have never looked forward to writing a review before. Ever. Wow. I can't wait. There's I so am, many things to talk about. I am so surprised. But it's gonna be interesting. I this movie's gonna blow your fucking mind. I think. Is this the first time you've liked anything? Uh, looking back, I think I actually, like, I don't think I really reflected this in the review, but I think I actually do remember fondly the package. I think looking back, like, I would watch that again. Oh, okay. And not have a bad time. I didn't, yeah. at the time, it took me a couple of weeks to, like, really get it in my head. But, like, yeah, I think that movie was actually kind of good. Um, I remember that being one of the, I think I gave you, it, like, even a at the four. time saying that was If I had one to go back ones. in time, I think I would give it, like, a six. Because, oh, okay. like, I think back to that, I remember most of the scenes in that movie, I think of it fondly now. Like, I would think, like, if someone put that on, I'd be like, oh, yeah, that movie's not bad. Yeah, I, I think that's a cool example of a, a teen comedy, not a rom-com, mm-hmm. but 
teen comedy doing something different. And stellar because cast. Because Like, the cast, really, yeah. they meshed perfectly. I, they, yeah. I haven't had that yet. But, no, I, at the time of the review, I was not super high on it. I gave it props, but, like, I didn't, I don't think, I wouldn't say I liked it then. Um, but looking back, I would say, so, no, this will be the first time that I think I've had a movie I'll be reviewing that I've actually just out and out liked. So, can't wait. <sighs> It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Well, stay tuned for next week because Larry enjoyed a movie. I know. It's odd. And of course, it's a first one really in 90s 90 adventure. Seven episodes. It's, a, it's such a garbage movie. <laughs> it's, so, it's so bad. I love it so much. Now, do you just empathize with the gorillas because of your gorilla hands? No, the gorillas are the worst part. The awful gorilla suits <laughs> are terrible. We're going to talk about Amy the Gorilla. Yeah. This movie got nominated for, no lie, I think nine Razzies. Jesus. It's not a good movie, but it's amazing, and I love it. Oh it it, it hits the... We'll, we'll get to it next week. All right, man. All right, God. Well, I am excited. So, yeah, uh, Facebook, Twitter, email us, bowsandnetflixgmail.com. Do all the podcast stuff, like, rate, subscribe. Smack your grandmother with your big, meaty grill paw. Tell her to listen to this show. Come back for Congo next week. Uh, oh. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We love you. Smell you later, you fucking jigglers. Oh, man. <laughs> jigglers? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, Oh, wait, half the episode was jiggling, Isaac. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>